what was your first call when you got into Sundance? My fiance. Aww. I caught her right off the rip. Uh, it was a tough one for us because it was like we were we were still finishing the movie. And it's Love Sundance. They're like, do you guys think you could finish the film? Before I was like, yeah, we could finish the film. I'm like, we're about to have music. Like, it's gonna be great. And I was like, I hung up the phone. I was like, we in there? And I was like. But damn, I gotta finish the film. And so I'm like, call everybody, like, we gotta finish this movie. We don't have no time. And the producer's like, can, you, can we finish? And I'm like, yes, we can finish. We got a month to do the rest of the editing, the music. The, and these guys, they came in through the clutch and last minute for music and stuff for the film. So I called my fiance and we had a moment, you know, just to sit down and just be like, all right, cool. We got in. You know, this was the goal. I was here last year pitching a movie and to be here this year with this amazing cast and crew. It's, it's yeah. incredible. Do you get the same sort of pie and feeling after like a scene as you do like on stage performing music? It's a different world. Same, you know, uh, place inside, but it's a different world outside. Performing is like creating a moment and there's improvisation and there's, it's just you. But with uh, a film, it's an ensemble cast. We're all, you know, in this divine love kind of relationship. And every single person has to, you know, do his or her part to yeah. so many make it happen. Moving parts. Yeah. Do you get nervous, like when you're in the theater? Absolutely. Like, oh, they were supposed to laugh at that, or. Yeah, I don't. I don't watch my films. I, mean, I actually yeah. just sit outside, like if there's a green room. Are you serious? Yeah. You don't no, watch. You don't. You're not gonna, you're not gonna watch, watch it tonight. I'm not gonna watch it tonight. <laughs> One, I've seen it so many times. Right. Right. Oh yeah. So many times, I can't watch it again. And right now, I just want to see. I want to watch the audience, and I want to hear them and see their reaction. But can I and, ask you? Yeah. Do you um to when you watch it so many times? Of course, there are things that you may have wanted to implement or say or mm -hmm. an edit that you wanted to happen that couldn't happen mm -hmm. or do you get like really self-conscious about it yeah what's crazy like picking it apart one you do when you're like man i had this one moment in here and there's a scene where uh that we took out with you that you saw oh yeah, yeah, yeah and it was like man i think the audience is going to miss something you know what i mean like i think they needed that or whatever it is to feel. And, it's, and I have those moments alive. So when we go to that scene, I, like, I get this cringe in my stomach, like, ah, oh, no, it's supposed to be here. Or there's a shot too long. I'm like that guy, like, did the audience sit in that emotion long enough? But then there's the best moments for me is like when I think something's funny. I, mean, I do a lot of drama, so when I think something's funny, my like, people gonna laugh at this, and they and they don't, <laughs> and they don't laugh, and I'm like, no, like I just totally fell. <laughs> and then there's moments in the film that I thought was so serious, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is the moment where people gonna they laugh, and then that's and I learned early on that you know like laugh, like comedy is actually like you know it's, it's from real life experience, it's from it's from pain, it's from something like that, and it shows in films because the moments where I expect people to be like oh man, they gave me this or that, they start laughing. And I'm like, that's because it's, it's a funny scenario and it's exposed, mm -hmm. not as in light. And we like to laugh at, yeah, we like to laugh at things that aren't really necessarily told. Um, so I get that feeling all the time, all the time. And especially when you have a film that's really, this is my second film where I'm going towards a really emotional ending. And so I, I haven't seen it yet with people who regular people see if they're gonna get like emotional. <laughs> we got a funny story, but okay. we did a song together. The land, and she provides the lyrics like the day we had a mix, mm -hmm. and it was, and it was, and it was, it's great. It's a great song. You heard it yeah. probably film, and we were we were listening to the lyrics. Me and JB, the composer, and we gave you notes, and you were like, "Sit on this for a day, baby. Just sit on this for a day, <laughs> and let me know what's up." And I was like, "I don't have a day," and then we did, and we sat on it, and it's perfect. And then me and JB look at each other like. Why do we even have notes? <laughs> so I want to know what in the studio made you think this was perfect? What gave you that vibe? Well, it wasn't so much that it was perfect. It was complicated to write a, a melody over a score mm -hmm. and to fit the lyrics in, you know, for the story that you wanted to tell. Yeah. So it, it, it was such a difficult time and I was so proud to have finished it in, in one day. Yeah. Because it's like a week's worth of work, really, for someone who doesn't read charts. Yeah. So I was like really proud to have done that mm -hmm. on my computer. Yeah. You know, on garage. On garage band. Garage band. Where, wow. where were you? In my bed. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so I turned it in. I was like, okay, they're gonna really love this. Just how you felt mm -hmm. about they're gonna laugh right here, mm -hmm. but then they cried. But yeah. it's you know when I heard the notes back, you know I was offended, you know in a. <laughs> in the artist kind of way because, you know, I'm sensitive about my shit. So I just felt like, okay, 
well, you know what? Instead of going back and doing it all over because I was so uh, confident about it because, uh, you know, just living the film and living your vision for a while, I really felt like it was, you know, um, right. I really hit, hit the mark. Yeah. And I'm glad that you did give it a chance. You, you know something funny about that? that? The first comment I made to her after she got off stage yesterday, I was like, the lyrics from that song were amazing because she sang. Because when you hear them live, it just cuts through differently. But it's funny that you weren't feeling because the first, the first, or the, what you weren't, uh, or that you wanted to like, you wanted to direct them in a different way. But it's funny because that was literally the, the, the what like turned me on the most about that song was like how beautiful those lyrics were. You know, either way it worked though. Oh yeah, it worked. You know, it would work either way. No, it did. It was just a matter of choice and kind of the feel that yeah, you wanted to. Yeah, and we to. just we rearranged some stuff, but it was just yeah. it was that moment where we were like we saw the whole playback. Dope man was in it. Nas did his song. He did his part on song. Yours yeah. and I watched the whole film again, but this time with the music mix, and I was like, dang. So I was like, it was perfect. And I was like, here I was like giving notes. And it was like, and I was like, dang, how did Erica know? Like, how did, it was bothering me. It was like, this shit is just experience yeah. one. But I, I feel mean, like it's a lot a of feel. it. Yeah. I love hearing these stories. I heard in another interview, you were talking about like you're consciously more present today. Does that just come with time? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just kind of practice a little like any other muscle or something. Mm -hmm. I think we're conditioned to worry about the future or be embarrassed or concerned about past. Mm -hmm. But it's like we breathe so much easier mm -hmm. when we're just like, see what my watch says? No. no. That's what time it is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's now. That's all that matters. That's I love that. Is on point. <laughs> and so she has this intuition, man. She just knows. <laughs> so she knew that was going to be brought up, that's right? Good. She showed you the watch. She just knows. Amazing. <laughs> if you could have a drink with anyone, you can be dead or alive, who would it be? Oh, that's such a good question. I think I know mine. Jesus? Um, you gonna say Jesus? No, but I talk to him every night. I was that's a very say, Stephen Cable answer right uh, there. Jesus. Jesus, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they know me. I don't they, know. Yo, he won't say shit. He says uh, junk. junk. He won't, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes I slip up. No, honestly, it would probably be, um, I haven't got the opportunity at all. It would be Tupac. Um, I know it's kind of a cliche answer, but like, I had problems with my pops growing up. And in general, we needed like, you know, a male role model. And it's weird to say, but like cats like Tupac were like music that I listened to, like I learned things, you know what I mean? I learned things about life, I learned things about society. And it was just through his music that he touched me. This is why I'm inspired by them. And like I said, the whole aspect of the film. So I would love to talk to him one day, have drinks or whatever it may be, and have him in his sober state of mind and just have him spit out any and everything, what he experienced about the film industry, the rap game, his life growing up, the activist movement is so much about him. He had all these different sides, but there's like one core thing and that was his love for people, no matter what he was talking. And I just, this is just me through music and interviews. I've watched so many interviews, so I feel like I almost did have a drink with Tupac, <laughs> yeah. but I would like to have an actual sit down and ask him a few questions about today yeah. and now and like what he, what he thinks about it. I want to have like a little round table with me, Bruce Lee. Oh, great <laughs> And uh, Nikola Tesla sitting there. Bruce Lee will hit. Tesla's here. And uh, Manson, the mass murderer, Manson. Yeah. Just to figure out what's like, how, how they think, what's on your mind. And, uh -huh. you know, how are we all alike or how are we all different? Uh -huh. You know. I would probably do like, I would probably do Salvador Dali because, you know, mm. one, he was, a, he was a, a great socialite. And I'm trying to get there, right? Like, I'm kind of bad. <laughs> socially so right so like yeah, I mean he was he like everyone loved this guy all every name from around the world every actor actress wanted to be around him right he but like the paintings that he did I don't know how he found the time to be such a socialite but then like you know he had the paintings were so intense that he had to have locked himself in and, and just spent so many like hundreds of hours doing these things and you know he has such a mass amount of work I mean it's just a lot of things that are interesting about that guy I mean Again, guys. Hey, cheers. Thank glass. you for doing this and congrats <laughs> <laughs> on the film. So exciting. Thank you. Appreciate it. Great interview. I like it. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah.